I, uh, I am not very fluent in Gujarati, so I won't attempt and make a fool of myself. But can I speak in English, English and Hindi combination? Okay. English will do. <laughs> that would be also be better for me. Uh, before I start, uh, I just wanted a show of hands. Yahan pe kitne log uh, builders, developers type vakti hai? How many of you are builders, developers type? Okay. How many of you are industrial manufacturer types? Okay. And how many of you are investors? Okay. What about the rest? That's only half the crowd. Uh, everyone's an investor. Okay. So uh, what I thought I'll do is uh, I have about a 30-minute long presentation, and I will go through uh, the entire uh, beginning of how this whole SIR was formed, what is the smart city and everything. Then I will show you how smart cities are being built and what specifically Dolera, how it is being built. And then uh, some opportunities and what kind of marketing we are doing. Okay. So what I would probably like is maybe go through my entire presentation. Uh, most of your questions hopefully will be answered. Agar aapka prashna either maine answer nahi kiya ho pehle hi, then maybe at the end you can ask me a question, okay, or questions. So uh, I wanted to start with explaining. Ye India mein aajkal jab se Modi sahab aa gaye hai center mein 2014 se smart city mission, smart city mission kafi chalta hai. To hamare dolera aur smart city mission ka kya sambandh kya hai? So actually there is no connection between the smart city program that was announced after Mr. Modi got elected and the smart city program that we are running. The one on the left is the smart city program that's undertaken by the Ministry of Urban Development. Okay? And the one on the right is the smart city program that's taken over by the Department of Commerce. Completely two different departments in the government of India, right? So we call the one on the left a brownfield smart city program. Brownfield meaning that the cities are existing and you are trying to convert them into smart cities. So they install certain technology or Wi-Fi or traffic management to make it smart. Like Surat is an example. Ahmedabad may be an example. However, on the right is the greenfield smart city. So greenfield means there is nothing there now. Greenfield means it's all ghas, poos, cover. Everything is green. Wahan se hum city bana rahe hai. And that program is called a Greenfield City Program. And Dolera is under the Greenfield City Program, under the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor, okay, which is part of the India's Industrial Corridor Program. Now, I don't know how many of you know, but there are five different corridors that are planned in India. And the main purpose for creating these corridors is to increase the manufacturing GDP of India. So India ka bhi jo aaj GDP hai, uska manufacturing sirf pandra takka hai. Wo pandra takke se pachis takka kaise lana, ye Department of Commerce ke andar girta hai. So Department of Commerce ne ye paach industrial corridor banaye, और वो कॉरिडोर में से ये दिल्ली मुंबई इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर जो है ये पहला कॉरिडोर चालू किया है जो 2009 10 में चालू किया था और उसके बाद लास्ट दो तीन साल में ये बाकी सारे कॉरिडोर चालू किए हैं और ये ऑल दिस कॉरिडोर्स आर मैनेज्ड बाय निगडिट द नेशनल इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर ट्रस्ट डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन राइट सो नाउ यू नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वेयर दोलेरा इज एज अ ग्रीनफील्ड स्मार्ट सिटी and where the other smart cities programs are, they have no connection, the funding mechanism is different, and the management is completely different. But they are routinely mixed up. One is called the other, and people call I'm a smart city, Dolera, and they think I'm a part of the Brownfield smart city. So on this Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor, uh, there are eight different nodes, as they call it, industrial areas that are planned, 
and you can see number six is Dolera. And this is the largest node on this Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. So Dolera is the largest. It is also the node that has come farthest along in terms of construction. So how big is Dolera? Dolera is 920 square kilometer. But if you compare that to some countries like Singapore, it is even bigger than Singapore. So we are almost building a country like Singapore because you can see Singapore is 71,900 hectares and Dolera is 91,000 hectares. So it's almost 20% bigger than the country of Singapore. So now you can imagine why it takes time and I will explain to you that also. But when it's completed, sab khatam hor jane ke baad, tis saal ke baad, Dolera ki population ka estimate hai, 2 million people, 20 lakh admi waha pe rehenge, aur lag bag 800,000, 8 lakh jobs, naye jobs create kiya jayenge. Ye jobs se humari manufacturing GDP badne wali hai. These are all new industries under the Make in India program, which is what's going to create the economy for India. So, a question, I am working on this project in 2012-2013, and a very common question that comes to me is, why does it take so long to build a city? So, I wanted to show you the timeline as to why it takes so long. So, in 2009, we enacted the SIR Act. But once the SIR Act is enacted, several things have to happen before you start building a city. So you have, to, you have to create a development plan, which takes some time. The development plan has to be then approved. To get a sanctioned development plan, it takes anywhere from three to five years. Because a development plan is a formal, official document of the government of Gujarat. It has a public review process. It has a public comment timeline. And it takes that long. You cannot rush. It is like say, saying, deliver me a baby in three months. The baby will take nine months, give or take 15 days, one month maybe. So development plan will always take three to five years because it is time consuming process. After the development plan, we have to do the design. After the design, then we have to do the construction. So you can see by the time we go through the entire process, we are anywhere between seven to 11 years. Now Dolera, just say advertisement kiya tha, Modi ji ne first, pehli baar bataya tha, 2009 mein mere khayal se, Dolera shahar aayega, bhoot bada banega, Singapore jaysay hooga, and everybody was saying, you know, kitna deri ho rahi hai, how late it is becoming, you cannot build a city, but now you can see why it takes time. There is no way, maybe ek ad saal hum jada expedite kar sakte te, but some of these things take time, development plan, design, construction, so these all take time, and it takes 7 to 11 years to build it. I also want to put in perspective Songdo in South Korea, which was the latest brand new city like Dolera that's being built, started in year 2000, okay? And today in 2017, it is only 50% built and it is only eight square kilometer. We are 22 square kilometers starting with going up to 900 and Songdo is only eight square kilometer and it is taking them 15 years. So, we are not behind in terms of benchmarking in the world. We are doing a great job. So I want you all to know that state of Gujarat, the Gujarat bureaucracy, and the engineers are all doing a fantastic job. So don't worry, this will happen. And I will show you how this will happen. So how do we start constructing a big country like Singapore or a big city like Dolera? You cannot do you know, 100 and 900 square kilometers. So as you know, we have town planning schemes. So we broke the town planning schemes into three phases. Phase one is TP one and two. Phase two is two or three and four. And then TP five and six is phase three. And you can see on the right hand side, we have given you the timelines, approximate timelines. So phase one is up to 2022. We are doing to the construction. Uske baad phase two or phase three chalu hoga, right? But within phase one, if you look at phase one, phase one is 153 square kilometer, which is TP1 and TP2. We have construction karne ka chalu, kaam chalu kiya tha, 2014, mein, mein. But we soon found out 
that the cost of building trunk infrastructure, those of you who are in construction will appreciate this, the cost of building trunk infrastructure for 153 square kilometer is close to 40,000 crore. Now, this 40,000 crore investment will come because there is no private investor that's going to come and build all the pipes, water, wastewater, power, gas, everything has to be built, right? So what we had at our disposal, we had 3,000 crore the government of India gave us a grant. So what can we do in 3,000 crore? So we have chosen a footprint of 22 square kilometers of footprint. In this 22 square kilometers of footprint, we have spent 3,000-4,000 crore and made a whole infrastructure. Complete, ready-made infrastructure. We call it plug and play. So you come in to the plot, everything will be ready to plug in. Just like a new laptop nowadays. Now, 22 square kilometers, it seems like it's small, 900 square kilometers, 22 square kilometers, but you think that 22 square kilometers is about the size of the city of Mumbai, the island city of Mumbai, from Kulaba to Bandra, is 26.2 square kilometers. Do you think you're going to Bombay, you think it's small? Okay, so this is not that small. 22 square kilometers is a city in itself. Gandhinagar, is about 40 square kilometer total. Gandhi Nagar ka planning chalu ho gaya 1965 mein. Abhi 50% bhi complete nahi hua. So you can see new cities take time and 22 is not a bad size. It is, it is a big size but because of industrial production it is going to go very fast once companies start relocating. So ye by square kilometer mein, this is the breakdown. Uh, in five years we will have 76,000 jobs uh, in Dolera, in the activation area, population about 1 lakh hoga. And ye jo aapko dikta hai purple area, that purple area is completely industrial. Okay? So, majority of activation area is completely industrial. Wahi pe hamara pahila client aayega, tenants aayenge, aur wahan se hi shruti ki shuruat hogi. And all the yellow is residential, the green is green cover, and all the red dots are public amenities, parks, playground, water, sewer, those kinds of things, power plant. So, by square kilometer ka hamara footprint, ye hamara footprint hai by square kilometer ka. And this footprint, Dolera, is going to be managed by Digdil. Digdil is a special purpose uh, investment vehicle, uh, SPV, I should say, which is formed between DMIC DC and the state government of Gujarat. And this is a special partnership, jo 51-49% partnership hai, jis mein DMIC ne 3,000 crore cash lagaya hai. Aur government of Gujarat ne 3,000 crore ki jameen di hai. So, humara corpus ban gaya 6,000 crore. Ye 6,000 crore se leke, hum initial trunk infrastructure ne chalu kar diya hum ne. Abhi jaise hum land parcel bechenge, so, today, compared to today, the land prices will already be 5-6 times after infrastructure investment. So, the money will come from that, we will build additional infrastructure from that money. So, this is a typical developer model. You do a developer like this, there are 4 buildings, you make a building, you sell it, you make a building, you make a building. So, this is the same model we are using except in land. So, we will be selling land. So, we call this a land monetization model. Right? So we have started with a corpus of 3,000 crores, which is not a small amount, and then growing it eventually the entire dolera over 30 years. So this is a little bit about Digdil. Uh, it, uh, it is a SPV, like I said. Uh, AECOM, uh, my company, is the program manager that was hired uh, to manage the entire implementation of dolera, and we've been here since 2013. Uh, and some of the unique things that we want to mention is that Initially, Digdil is going to be managed like a business. So there is a managing director. Uh, he was supposed to come here today, but unfortunately, because of the swearing-in ceremony, he got tied up there. Uh, but managing director will run, run this like a private company CEO, not like a municipality. Even though it's a municipality, it will be run like a business. 
he has a board of directors he has to report to, which means he has to have satisfy his metrics and his performance criteria. So it will be run like a business, and it's going to be very efficient, single window operation, all services under one umbrella. So what are we building in Dolera right now? So we are building all of these trunk infrastructure projects. This is what the DMIC Trust has approved right now. And the trust approval is 2,784 crores. So that's the money that is already authorized to us. The balance of the money, 4,400 crores, we are going to find some PPP private partner. It is mostly in the power and the water side. And we will figure out how we will get that funding part done. But right now we are proceeding. We have five construction contracts already let out. LNT is the largest construction contract. You saw them on the film earlier today. Uh, Cube Construction, CCEL is doing the ABCD building. LNT is also doing the water and the uh, uh, CETP. And then SPML Construction from Delhi is doing the water treatment plant. So we have country's largest five uh, contracts being let out at this amount. Okay, so I, now I want to get a little bit into connectivity because uh, the second most frequently asked question to me is, Are yaar, tumhara dholera kahan ka kaha pada hua hai? So kilometer dur, log jayenge kaha? Kaise wahan pe? Koon jayega basne ke liye? So I want to remind everyone that there are many places in the world where you start a new city that's 50, 60, 80, 100 kilometers away, but very soon, over 10, 20 years, it sort of merges into the nearest main city. In, in our case, we are hoping that Ahmedabad will be that nearest main city because it's a more vibrant, bigger community. And we are also introducing this concept of twin city, where Dolera and Ahmedabad will become almost like a twin city concept. Maybe not now, but maybe in a few years, because the corridor between Ahmedabad and Dolera we are right now building a six-lane access control expressway. That expressway is actually under design by National Highways Authority of India. It has already been funded. Land acquisition has started. Okay. We are also building a metro inside the accessway that will reduce the commuting time between Ahmedabad to Dolera to less than 45 minutes. Now, when that happens, Distance will no longer be an issue. It is going to become a twin city concept. If, you know, when you have a metro, you can sit there, sleep, read your book, be on your Wi-Fi, at the same time go to work, relax, and not drive. I think that would be fantastic. Wouldn't you say so, right? So we are doing all of those things. And to show you again, there is also an airport that's coming up near Dolera, although that's not part of the DMIC project directly. DMIC is involved on the outside because the airport and Dolera both benefit each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. Because if airport succeeds, Dolera succeeds. If Dolera succeeds, airport succeeds. So we are helping each other out, although it's a separate project from Dolera. Then the last connectivity factor is, of course, our industrial clients. Right now, there is an existing uh, train line, a broad gauge from Sanand all the way down to Botad. But the connection between Botad and, I mean, Bimnath and Dolera is missing. So that connection between Bimnath and Dolera, we are actually building that connection right now. Right? So with that missing connection, once we make that missing connection between Bimnath and Dolera, you will have a complete rail connectivity into Sanand, where all of the manufacturing goods made in Dolera can be connected via Sanand into the dedicated freight corridor, which then goes to the rest of the country or the world. I also wanted to point out where the, the existing state highway, I'm sure all of you who have driven there have noticed that existing state highway is being reinforced. And the main reason for that is because the expressway will take about four years to build. See, we did not want to take any chance, so we are already strengthening the existing SH6 and SX, SH1 and 40. They have already been strengthened and the lanes have been added capacity. So you, I'm sure those of you who drive down there have noticed that. Then overall, from a connectivity standpoint, you know, once you are near Dolera, it's extremely well connected to all the ports by road and rail. 
So this is a slide that we have created for our industrial clients to show that, you know, within a six-hour drive, they can be in Mundra, or within a two-hour drive, they can be in Bhavnagar, because our industrial clients mostly want to know how can they evacuate their, their business goods, the manufacturing goods. So they have easy access to airports, ports, but through rail or by road, both ways. Okay, so now let me switch the gears a little bit and, uh, and speak about smart cities. So I'm sure the word smart cities has been so overly used that people, people are curious, you know, what does a smart city mean? Does, can anyone give me a one-line definition what smart city means to them? Does anyone have that? Okay. Well, I'll give it a shot then, okay? So this is, this is sort of my own definition, uh, which is compiled from many different sources, but it's really our thinking of what we have come across. Smart city is, the city itself is, is, is an inanimate object. It is just a dead thing. But what makes it smart is we have installed systems, processes, and devices into this infrastructure so that the people, you, the businesses, you, can make smart decisions. So let me give you a few examples of smart decisions. I'm sure all of you, most of you, may be familiar with Google, right? So what happens in today's world? If you have traffic jam, you have to go to Ahmedabad, so how many of you Google frequently and say, where is the traffic from? Quite a few of you. Okay, see, I've seen some hands. So what does Google do? Google is taking the data and giving you the information so you can make the smart decision, correct? In, in our case, we will have something like this because we will have all these sensors and traffic instruments within our infrastructure so that you can make the smart decision on your traffic. Let me, let me give you another example of a smart decision. In the future, as our resources become more and more scarce and valuable, water, for example, will be priced based on the time of day usage. So, sham ko shayad pani bhot menga ho sakta hai, din mein sasta hoga, kyunki jo bhi demand hai hota hai, to pani ka bhao bhi bar jata hai. Jaisa like everything else, demand supply ki cheez hai. So, the smart meters that we are going to install is going to give you up to the minute minute-by-minute minute consumption of your water. So you can make the decision whether you want to use that water now or you want to use the water at night when the rates are cheaper. That's what I mean by smart decisions. And we are doing the, or putting all of these infrastructure components into the infrastructure now, which you cannot do in a brownfield city. That's the difference. A greenfield city that's smart from ground up. So here's a snapshot of everything that we are building. This is a typical cross-section of our road. And there are two points or three points I want to make here. Number one, first time in India, first time in India, we are building all of the trunk infrastructure underground. Water, power, ICT, gas, uh, wastewater recycle, everything is buried underground, even the power lines. I am sure you have gone to many cities, all of you. You have never power line underground. The power line is always up. It looks very ugly. It looks like it's up there. I mean, it doesn't come to us. Our whole power line is underground. Completely. Underground power line saves you 7% transmission loss. 7%. That's a big deal in transmission loss. This is efficiency, right? So we are building everything underground. Secondly, we have plan this and build this for the next 30 years. Agle 30 saal ka infrastructure planning aaj hi se karke usko pura underground abhi dal diya hai. Isko hum bete hai dig free. In the next 30 years, you will not be digging the streets of Dolera for infrastructure. You may dig it for other reasons, <laughs> but you will not dig it for infrastructure. So whenever you need a fiber optic, all you have to do is pull a cable because the pipes are already built in to the tunnels, right? So all this is cost money. You don't get this kind of infrastructure in any industrial estate in India, in any city in India. That's why Dolera is world class and the best. So
So in terms of different infrastructure, I just want to give you what the highlights are in each one of those components. So in roads and services, for example, we are building almost 300 kilometers, lane kilometers of road. So it's a total of 72 kilometers of road, but multiple lanes, so we call it 300 kilometer lanes of road, completely traffic integrated sensor system. Each traffic light is going to have cameras, speed limits, sensors. So all that information I talked about devices, being smart, it will be transmitted back to you, so you make the decisions which road do you want to take. So that kind of information is going to be proactive, not reactive. So we have dedicated cycle tracks, you can see how the cross sections are de designed. And this is, this is the overall roadmap. And what you will see right now is it doesn't work on the screen, but G4, that line that comes from Dolera Village, that is the road G4 right now that's being built. I'm sure anybody who has gone to Dolera right now. So you can start seeing now the city is beginning to take some shape and form. So everything underground is built. Slowly it has to come up. And most of you know that Dolera is a very difficult area for construction because the soil conditions retain a lot of moisture. So you have to dry out the moisture, compact it correctly, so the roads will last there for 30 or 50 years. So that's what we are doing, is building these roads right now. And here's a few more pictures of the bridges and the roads that are going on. So in terms of power, uh, like I said, completely underground transmission system. Uh, power is going to be available in March 2019. Uh, right now, we have invited private companies, uh, both Torrent and Adani, are applying for the license with GERC, and Jetco is building the transmission line. So both of those components will be ready March 2, 2019, the latest or even sooner than that. Then in water, which is by far our smartest component because of the technology the way it is, we have quality meters, so you get the ultimate best quality of water. We have district management on water, and then we have smart meters as well as leak detection system. This is another component which to you as consumers is going to save a lot of money. Leak detection is a major problem in all the cities in India. For example, in Mumbai, about 34% of the water that's produced, which is paid for, gets lost or stolen. In Ahmedabad, about 17 to 23%. And who pays for the lost water? The existing customers pay, right? Because it has loaded onto your cost. In Dolera, we will not waste more than 4% of water. And that is only because of evaporation, transpiration, and whatever is required to wash down the machinery. But the rest of the water is going to be back into the system. That means that higher efficiency, lower cost. All the points that I'm making is we are installing all these smart features, not just to increase the cost, but we are installing them because eventually the consumer is going to pay less in the long run, because all we look at is life cycle cost savings. That's what we look at. In terms of portable water, uh, we are bringing in 10 MLD of water immediately, and it will be ready by March again 2019, or maybe June 2019. Uh, and then again, everything is smart meter metering. I think it's the same system. Uh, recycled water, that's another unique aspect of Dolera, is that we have 100% recycling of wastewater. I think this is probably the first city in India that is doing 100% recycling. And all of this wastewater is going to be used for industrial water use. So pura ka pura wastewater jo hai, industrial pani ke liye use kara kiya jayega, aur hamare paas dual plumbing system bhi hai. So kamod ke liye, khali wash down ke liye, separate piping system hogi in the, within the buildings. So we are maximizing sustainability. We are promoting water savings. Gujarat is a water scarce area. And for all of these different things, I'll show you the kind of accolades and awards that we have won later on. But this has been recognized all over the world as the best place in terms of technology and utilities. In terms of solid waste, again, uh, 
It's door-to-door -door collection of solid waste. Everything will be collected in separate bins, 100% recycling, composting, biomethanation, uh, gas production. So all of those things are planned, although solid waste will take some time because as people come in, you generate garbage. You don't need it on day one. So about maybe two or three years down the road, we will do that. This slide particularly talks about the different sensors. There are close to 2,000 sensors that we have planned across the city. And there are sensors for traffic, sensors for pollution, sensors for uh, your leak detection systems, automation sensors. And this is what I mean by collecting data. You know, when data becomes knowledge and knowledge becomes information, that's when you make smart decisions. So this is our investment. You will not find any other city in the world building these kinds of sensors and technology into your smart city structure. Okay, so that leaves us with the infrastructure components. Now let me get into the, the urban transit and the livability aspects of Dolera. Okay, so so far we have talked about businesses and infrastructure and utilities. So what this shows you is what are we planning from a transit uh, standpoint for Dolera. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is a metro uh, within the expressway. The yellow line is the expressway. And there is a metro that's going to run from Ahmedabad to Dolera. It's currently on the JICA funding plan uh, for 2019. Then there is a light rail system plan, which shows you the green, the blue line. And what I wanted to also show you was the transit-oriented development that we are planning, where the metro is coming on this line. You've got the, the light and blue light rails. And then you've got the bus terminal. And this orange patch that we show, it is our high access corridor. High access corridor is mixed use development, high FSI, and it's going to be like what they would call the downtown. Okay, so it's going to have a transit oriented development where you will have all kinds of businesses, commercial, and people, uh, residential uh, development going on in one place. So from a social infrastructure standpoint, uh, this shows you I'd like to make a comment on this picture because this picture has captured uh, the imagination of many people. And I wanted to share with you, uh, you know, how come there is a canal in Dolera? Most of you may be wondering, but this is a good time to share a little story with you that all of you know Dolera is a very flat land. Okay? People routinely confuse flooding and flooded area with inundation. That is a technical difference between the two terms. Inundation means when water has nowhere to go because it is so flat that it has the inability to drain. Normal land mein paani jab girta hai, to paani jidhar se slope hota hai, paani nikal jata hai. Nadi mein jayega, you know, kanal mein jayega, kidhar samundar mein jayega, right? But dolera mein itni flat, itni jameen flat hai ki ek end of dolera se dusre end tak, there is only 1.5 meter drop. To paani ko jane ke liye jaga hi nahi hoti, to barish jab girta hai, Nadia behti hai, to paani ekdam spread ho jata hai. To usko hum technical term mein inundation kehte hai. To humne bhoat badiya engineering banai hai iske liye. So, I don't want to tell you that this is the first time in the world because there are many cities in the world that have tackled a inundated area. The most prominent example is Venice. Venice is actually under water. How many of you have visited Venice and you know how beautiful the city is? You know, if they can survive there for 500 years, Dolera is nothing. At least I can see ground. Venice mein to ground dikta hi nahi hai. Right? New Orleans in America is another area that is completely underwater. But people live there for the last 200 years. Dolera, what we have done is we have created this canal. This was an engineering solution to a technical drainage problem. Because the water could not flow, we created this canal so that all the water, short distance, it can flow, but it cannot flow long distance. So once the canal was created, all of a sudden we realized the idea that hey, this canal to can become a very high real estate value. Just like you have the Sydney Harbour, you have the London, Embarked, London Thames River Bank. You know, there are many places in the world where the natural river provides a great atmosphere for developing riverfront property. Sabarmati riverfront is a fantastic example. 
It was nothing there a few years ago, but today it looks really nice. So something like that is what we are planning in Dolera. So it looks very pretty now, but really this was an engineering challenge, a solution which has now become really a very high aesthetic value, which is actually going to become an icon for Dolera, I think, okay, in the future. So from a social infrastructure standpoint, we have planned everything that a resident would like to have. Okay, so for example, let me come back to the housing in a second. Let me just show you the life in Dolera. We have structured the green spaces. Everything is walk to work. We have got cycle tracks, safety. We have addressed the, the street light, street design, urban designs, and the social amenities. And then one by one, I'll just go through it. Uh, again, something quite unique is within five minute walking of every residential neighborhood, there will be a neighborhood park, neighborhood cluster, we call it, okay? Within a 10 minute walk, which is 800 uh, meter walk, there will be a community park. And within uh, a 4,000 meter walk, there will be a regional park. This is some state of the art best practices that we have incorporated, where the city has to be green and open space, and almost 5% of Dolera is open space and green. That's very high compared to most of the Indian cities. So what are we providing in each one of these different parks? So in a regional level park, for example, we have all these different facilities, and they are typically clustered around the park. So it will be easy for people to find out where those clusters are. You will have all these different things. Then when you come to neighborhood and community, you can see in a neighborhood park, there will be primary school, nursery, local markets. But in a community park, you may go to integrated schools, like a high school. Uh, you can go to Anganwadi community market. So you can see there is a distinction between short walk, where smaller families and quick to get areas, and then there is a little bit further walk for some larger activities that go on. And this is how we have spread out all of the social infrastructure. So this is already pre-planned. So you will not find some school coming up anywhere or the zoning being changed. Nobody can change the zoning in Dolera. It's pre-planned, it's fixed, so you know exactly where all of these facilities on the right-hand side, and they are located on the map there. You, I know it's hard to read, but they are located on the map. They are all properly shown on the map. So you can know exactly if you are planning something in Dolera where all the social facilities will be coming up. I talked about the, the canal earlier, and we see great opportunities in the canal. You know, uh, particularly for me, uh, coming here to Dolera and designing uh, a brand new city. You know, I always notice when I'm in India that it is uh, the sense of civic sense, to say aap bolte ho. Civic sense, pride for our community, uh, art and architecture. I don't know, for some reason, Aatskal ki generation doesn't give it a lot of value. So we are trying to bring that back through this whole canal feature where we may have art and artistic expressions, we may create zones, uh, that will uh, allow people to showcase their art culture. Uh, we may create zones where we can demonstrate Swachh Bharat, some of the national initiatives like such Swachh Bharat. So we are trying to create an environment where family is just as happy as businesses, where we have a lot of open spaces, a lot of parks with good kindergarten schools, good school education, good public hospitals, public facilities. So all of these things are pre-planned. Now all that we need to do is get this tremendous audience interested and start building, right? Okay, so in terms of municipal operations, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we are providing a lot of uh, smart devices and systems into Dolera. All of this is going to come into a central command control center. And this command control center, the picture on the top left that you see, is, uh, is more like uh, if you have seen the movie Star Wars. You know how they show all those big screens. So the entire city is going to be mapped and planned from there. So every single traffic light, every single water meter, every single usage, everything comes into this command control center. You know, Ahmedabad uses miniature version of this now. They have a police command control center. Surat also has one. But for a city-wide, nobody has one yet. So 
So Dolera will be the first one. And what I mentioned earlier, this whole cycle of gathering data, bringing the data into the control room, writing the computer algorithms and the analytics to give you the knowledge to make smart decisions is going to happen here. This is the brain of the city, which is going to reside in the SPV building. You saw the building earlier that's being built. Smart governance, which is again a, uh, what do you call, a wireless form of government. Nobody should be able to, in today's day and age, should be required to walk to city hall or, or city offices to get a driver's license or pay your fees or bills. All of that will be online. You should be able to do it on mobile. You should be able to do it on your laptop. Everything will be online, and this is going to be built in. This is already being done in many places throughout India because this is the easiest place to convert a brownfield city into a smart city. So a lot of the brownfield cities are already doing this. But for us, it's a way of life in Dolera. It's going to be part of our... And this is the ABCD building. I mentioned this is the construction that's already going on. You can see some of the pictures there. I think the video that was shown earlier on uh, actually did was a fantastic video that showed you some insights on the construction that was going on. So probably of most interest to all of you is, you know, what are we selling, when are we selling, and for how much are we selling, you know? So you can all do your businesses, and I see a lot of karorpatis in here in the next few years. This is all of the zoning that I mentioned earlier. Uh, purple is industrial. The same thing you can see on the right-hand side is all of the plot sizes. So we have 0 to 5 hectare, 25 plots, 5 to 10 hectare, 17 plots. Now those plots, these are plots owned by the government. There are many, many private players in the activation area. We have not listed their plot sizes yet. This is only what government is selling right now. This is what we are targeting our audience, which is the industrial clients that we are selling to. Uh, we are also uh, advertised heavily for uh, selling our land. We have made a commitment that uh, uh, of the initial 5,600 hectare, uh, we will give them allotment in 17 days and possession in 90 days. This is by far the fastest that we have made a commitment to. This is our commitment to efficiency and transparency. And our complete land allotment system is online. Anyone here can go online right now. That's the address right there. You can go online. You can select the plot. You can click on the plot. It will give you the information on the plot, what the dimensions are, what the setback is. And you can make an application online. That application online goes to our general manager, Dilip Brambhat, who's sitting right here. He then processes it and puts it up to the MD for approval. There is a land allocation committee that votes based on the businesses. If the industry falls into one of many categories that we really want to have, which is the mega investment category, and there is several formulas for that, we offer several incentives and discounts. So a lot of industries are right now talking to us, and they are all looking at it. So as soon as we get a little bit above ground, in, I think in the next three to six months, we should have some sort of an idea of who our anchor tenants are going to be. These are the industries that we are targeting. Uh, defense, general manufacturing, heavy engineering is our top three priorities for the simple reason that all these three industries require the largest amount of land for their businesses. And Dolera has the highest amount of land of any new city in India. We have also done a benchmarking throughout Southeast Asia and we find that there is no other new city or an industrial estate that can offer land parcels as big as Dolera. So if under Make in India, we are fortunate enough to get one of those contracts, the company comes to us, they will not find land anywhere else but Dolera because they will want 1,000, 2,000 acres that no industrial estate in Gujarat has that kind of land, but no other state in India has that kind of land to give. So some of the immediate opportunities that we see for this audience here is housing. We are going to start working on the housing, all of the different income groups. Uh, we are looking at some commercial opp opportunities, hotels, offices, 
somebody wants to take a chance and, and start building ahead of time, uh, although you know the industries haven't come, but somebody wants to take that chance and, and get on, I think there's a great opportunity now. Recreation, uh, high interest to us right now, because especially golf courses, it, it could be a destination golf course. I still remember Kenneth Wills, uh, Jamin, my associate here, has been involved in that for some time. When it was built, there was nothing there, but today it's such a thriving place. So a golf course resort is a destination that can convert into a city-like feature later on, because it can start as a destination, doesn't need a city next to it. An hour and a half drive, hour drive, is not a big deal for golfers. They love to drive and play 18 holes. Solar Park, another opportunity for a lot of you who are in the business, if you want to become developers of Solar Park, uh, that is a great initiative by the government of India right now, giving grants and funding and developers can think about this model as well. Educational institutions, and then finally, uh, medical facilities. So all of these categories are opportunities for people in the audience who are in maybe different kinds of businesses uh, to take and start getting involved in Dolera. So finally, just in summary, I wanted to give you, uh, I, I think I've touched upon all of these different factors, why Dolera you know, large land parcels, uh, extremely planned communities, uh, the best in class infrastructure, uh, sustainable living, all of those things. Uh, just walk away from here knowing that there is no other city like this in India that's being planned. It's going to be first of its kind, and it's going to be the best in terms of the services and transparency that it provides. So we have projected this kind of planning design to many, many different forums around the world. And we have won many, many different awards uh, since 2016. And this award especially is very recognizable, and it's one of the best awards because Dolera is the only city in the world, mark you, in the world, that is platinum rated. <laughs> only city. So just the fact that getting this title, and this is given by the Green Building Council, which is the highest green building council. All of you are developers and builders. I'm sure you are familiar with them. This was awarded by the Indian Green Building Council. To get platinum rating, you have to have 90 points out of 100, and you have to excel in all of your planning, in all of the infrastructure, in all of the smart city components, and we've done that. And with you, we will make this even more successful, we hope. So with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much.